go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Welcome all to the Master Leong Show. Yeah, today is Happy Sunday. So special. Uh, talk all in go. Talk about go. Talk about the tech crash that happened last Friday night. Also, also talk a bit about Stephen Lim. So I have a poll for you all. Are you buying go physical go or go ETF? Uh, so feel free to let me know. Okay, so later I'll come back uh, to, to this poll. Uh, before. The second part I'll talk about go. First part, I'll talk, talk about the US tech crash because I think a lot of you all are concerned. CSGO, wow, Master, Sunday special, yeah. Read the encouraging news coming from e-commerce first quarter growth in China. Yeah, I, I, I have this news. So I'll, it's towards the end. Uh, when I, after I finish talking about Go, I'll, I'll talk about it also. Marvin Fu, welcome. ML, Bitcoin is going up. Uh, I think it was as low as 60k recently, then it jumped now, I think it's like 65k. So it's bouncing here and there. There's no clear direction. Yeah, but, but Bitcoin is a bit similar to gold. Later, I, I might talk a bit about Bitcoin in relation to gold. LVX Sub Club, thoughts eh, thoughts eh. Wow. Hope you're enjoying your Sunday. Thanks for the support. Wow, so cute, ah, this one. The dinosaur uh, uh, picture, so cute, on the uh, computer chair. So, Pang Yao Tian, welcome. Oleg, no Baba, eh, no Go, but Baba and SE. So, hope Baba and SE, long term should do well, la, as long as they can grow their earnings and revenues. YK, Money, Cliff Chu, T, uh, Brian, welcome, welcome. Money, yeah, TikTok is out of US. Yeah, I saw the news, la, but I did not include it into my slides. Because nothing more to add. Uh. Basically, US, like I say, yeah, they, they seem quite determined to kick uh, TikTok out already. So it's a made decision. But the big question is, uh, who will be buying out TikTok? So TikTok will be forced to sell themselves. So it could be Alphabet, it could be Amazon, it could be Microsoft, or it could be a group of hedge funds trying to uh, buy TikTok out. So there's a lot of possibilities. Uh, we see how it goes. SJ, Stephen Lim, yeah, yeah, later I'll talk about Stephen Lim, yeah, Stephen Lim, Coco, Jared, nice seeing you, I saw you at the Chief Papa live stream, wow, uh, last night Chief Papa did the live stream, so he talked about the Hong Kong market, so usually his methodology is bull market, right, bull 1, bull 2, bull 3, then bear market, bear 1, bear 2, bear 3, so Hong Kong, uh, previously he said was bear 3, so we're waiting for the recovery part, the the bull one did not come. Instead, now it's bear four. So Hong Kong is very depressed. Uh. And Chief Papa said that Hong Kong stocks are, are trading at 0 0.5 times book value, 0 0.3 times book value, uh, even 0 0.1 times book value. It's dirt cheap. Uh. So he, he's also buying heavily into Hong Kong stock. But but to see he's the nice stock pick for the Hong Kong market, you have to pay money to his the, uh, paid membership. Uh. Oh, I don't know how much. Uh. But I know that through comments, right, uh, he's the... Top picks is there's Meituan, there's also Xiaomi, and there's also Futu. Uh, these, these are the Hong Kong stocks that he has been buying Meituan, Futu, and Xiaomi. Uh, I think he's not buying Tencent. Alibaba, I'm not sure if he buying or not. Yeah. Oh, yeah, money. Oh, you also got follow. Yes. Meituan, Xiaomi, and Futu. Uh. Uh, he, he's more like, he, he don't buy the super blue chips like Alibaba, Tencent one. He, he go for more like, Higher risk, higher return, uh, higher growth kind of kind of picks. Yeah. Okay. So let me begin. So oh no, oh, US SMCI crashed twenty three percent, twenty three percent on Friday night. That was super scary. But SMCI uh, had a very strong run up already. So basically, MSCI their business right is build those server rack. So there's a boom in in AI boom in computing power boom in data center so they are the Wuhan that help uh, make the server racks so I feel that uh, this business right honestly honestly speaking there's no mode la. there's no mode huh? just that it's being hyped up and the peak was almost 1200 plus now sold down to 700 down 500 it has crashed over 40 percent from the peak so what was the triggering point why suddenly down 23 percent last Friday also, 
when it sold down, everything else was also uh, linked to AI was also sold down. So when you watch like videos from like Adam Cool, Adam Cool have an update on this. He says that it's a rotation out of tech into like banks and healthcare. So some are saying it's, it's a rotation. Or oh, but you dig deeper, the 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 super micro uh, or the, the micro or super micro computer, super micro computer. Uh, so they uh, make an announcement on Friday that their third quarter results will be released on April 30. So this does not feel right because previously when they announced their results, right, they have uh, they do a pre-announcement, means they give some preliminary numbers because it was so strong. But this time around, it did not have any pre-announcement as compared to the one in January. Also, without any pre-announcement, uh, this is considered a negative or uh, because they did not have any positive pre-announcement so the comments by analysts is that i think if they were going to blow it out away again they probably would have said something so this may be concerning a bit so it could be that last year was the super boom and this this year the first quarter numbers the numbers will not be so explosive really things will start to normalize so i think all these AI stocks, right, the price have run up too much already. There's so much expectation, so much anticipation. It's very hard for these companies to live up to expectation. Like I shared with you all the Netflix result. Netflix result was good. The growth numbers was good. Yet, Netflix was down 9% on Friday night. So, Nvidia crashed 10%. So, this is very scary. Uh. Like, you see Wall Street bad. Or uh, people say buy the dip, or the like Nvidia drop from nine hundred fifty to nine hundred. But buy the dip, nine hundred drop to eight hundred. People buy the dip. So those that buy the dip, right? I think they will get burned. Uh, or uh, I think the trend has changed already. On from nine seven four peak, now now it's coming down. Year to date is still up fifty three. But my question is, what if it loses its year to date the entire gains? What if uh, the entire gains? It is 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 what what off, yeah. So what if it comes back down to four or five hundred dollar level? Uh, so the big question is: Is this a crash or is this a correction? So there are a lot of dif different saying now. But I say most people are saying that this is just a correction. I think Mister Lu says that oh uh, this is just a correction. I think Adam Ku also says that uh, this is a correction. Then uh yesterday I saw Chief Papa Chief Papa. His methodology is that in the bull market, there's bull 1, bull 2, and bull 3. So he's now saying that it's the mid phase, it's the bull 2 only. It's not bull, bull 3 phase because uh, it's not like the other time we saw in 2.0 and 2.1. A lot of profit, profitless or high growth tech that are super loss making got beat up to super high valuations. So he says it's not a bull 3, it's, it's a bull 2 and it's just a correction. and and. After the correction, it will continue to move higher. So most YouTubers are saying that this is a correction. For me, I, I don't care whether it's a correction or is it a crash. I still think that valuations for US big tech, especially AI related, is very expensive. It's definitely not cheap. So I'm avoiding the US market uh, entirely. I, I will not buy this dip. Uh, a lot of YouTubers will tell you to buy this dip. Think, saying that this is a correction, it will bounce back up. But I will not buy this dip. But my, my thinking is a bit contrarian. So Nvidia, right, this 10% drop is the biggest drop since the pre-lockdown period. Uh, so the, for the past three and a half years, uh, this is the biggest drop really of, of 10%. So fear is coming back. I, I, we sense that fear is coming back for all these tech companies. But uh, like I said, now we are into earnings season. So macro environment is already very bad. Macro environment meaning the big picture, like there's the Middle East war, there's still the Russia-Ukraine war, and inflation is inching higher, or 3.5%, maybe it's coming to 3.8%. If inflation prints 4%, I think the market will sell down. If oil prices prints $100 or high, the market will sell down. So on the macro front, uh, there are a lot of numbers that could spook the market and further sell the market down. That, that's what I think. So for fundamentals wise, earnings season wise, right? 
the companies have to prove themselves whether they are worth the high PE ratio or not. Like, like Tesla now, it's still, despite the sell down or until now is below the $150 level, it's still trading at 53 times earnings. So my fair value for Tesla is 10 times earnings. Uh. So a lot of people say, Master is an idiot. Uh. <laughs> what? Yeah, but, but that's my honest view. It's a cyclical company. To me, it's a car company. So Tesla is down 40% year to date. So among the Magnificent 7, Tesla is the worst performer. The second worst is Apple. So mainly because their sales in China is not doing well. So uh, Tesla will report their results on Tuesday. So Tuesday, right, if Tesla miss results, it's very bad. And Tesla crash 10-20%. It might also lead to other big tech to be sold down. Why? Because Tesla investors, right, is like the herd. You see a lot of YouTubers that, that talk about US stocks, right? Most of them, they are vested in Tesla. And some of them like to use leverage. So if it sharp, sells down sharply, they have to deleverage to prevent a margin call. Then they have to sell some of their stocks in their portfolio. And usually the typical new age retail investor, what is their investment portfolio? That like I share with you all is like something similar to Mick Habit. Tesla, Amazon, Nvidia, Microsoft, Meta, or uh, AMD, Intel. So it's all those uh, chip companies, chip companies and AI related stocks. Yeah, so if Tesla comes down, it, it might drag others to be sold down also, as people will de risk and people deleverage. So Tesla, right, the performance has been very bad, and investors are very angry. You go on Twitter, there's so many Tesla investors that are angry. But the problem is, Smart money has sold off already. Funds have started to sell. That's why Tesla is on the downtrend. But retail investors are still back holding. They hold and they keep complaining. They are keyboard warrior. They keep scolding each other on, on Twitter. The Tesla bulls are, are scolding each other on Twitter. So nowadays, very few people come and scold master because the, the, the Tesla bulls, they, they are fighting each other. <laughs> so the Tesla bull, or one of the big uh, te uh, Tesla bull uh, is the Liu Koguan. Also, he's a Singaporean, Indonesian. Uh, so he's the biggest retail uh, shareholder for uh, Tesla. So he, I think his stake in Tesla is worth about 3.5 billion. Also, he's a billionaire. I think his net worth is about 8 or 9 billion. So one third of his net worth is in uh, Tesla. So he's seen in the picture with Elon Musk. Uh. So he's very vocal. So he, he went on an interview. Uh, uh, then he said that he will vote down uh, the coming uh, compensation package for Elon Musk. Because Elon Musk, the, this 55 billion package was for his the, uh, share options uh, in, in the past, uh, pre, pre the COVID period, that if he hit the target, uh, he will be rewarded. But the court actually rejected this. Uh, the shareholders complained and they filed to dismiss this compensation and was uh, dismissed, dismissed in the Delaware court. That's why Tesla, they will be moving their incorporation into uh, Texas uh, and then they will revote again. So I think most likely uh, this will be voted down. Because number one is a very huge uh, dilution. If it's approved, there is about a 13% dilution to existing Tesla shareholders. If Tesla now the stock price is $400, I think shareholders will, uh, will approve it. But now the stock price is below $150. So shareholders are very frustrated. They want Elon Musk to wake up his idea. So I think this is on a downward spiral. So Elon Musk now is trying very hard to, to pop up the price. If he doesn't get this compensation, does, it, does Tesla matter a lot to Elon Musk? The answer is no. Elon Musk holds stakes in so many great tech companies or oh, they have the Neuralink or oh, the monkey with the chip that one there's a SpaceX or oh, uh, Fire the Rocket or oh, the Starlink or oh, oh, those or oh, there's the Boring Company or oh, Dig the Tunnel one there's also the Grok G-R-O-Y his uh, AI company there's also X so he has so many companies he can live without Tesla so if he doesn't get this compensation he might be frustrated he might dump his Tesla shares so it's like, you kill me, I kill you. <laughs> so so that, that, that's the problem. So Elon Musk might, 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 might just run out of Tesla, get, get out of Tesla. So I think there's a lot of downside risk for Tesla. So Tesla will report results on Tuesday. Then the surprising thing is before announcement of results, right? 
they announced that they are cutting prices for their car and also for their full cell driving uh, software. So I think one week ago, the full cell driving from one dollar ninety nine, they just slash it by half. The monthly subscription uh, to ninety nine dollars. This is based on a Twitter poll by some, some individual, and most people voted that one hundred ninety nine is too expensive. Eighty percent of the votes was for ninety nine dollars. So Elon Musk is also very fast moving. Uh, then he just quickly up, update the price to ninety nine. Or oh, Neymar is the monthly subscription, ah. Or oh, then you can also choose to pay a one-time fee for a lifetime subscription. So the lifetime subscription, right, from twelve thousand dollar, it has been cut by one third to eight thousand dollars. So that's a very steep cut. That's a very steep cut. So my thinking is that they announced that they will uh review something on August eight, right? The FSD announcement. If they're gonna announce robo taxi or this. Shouldn't the price be more expensive? Because, like if you see Elon Musk in his speech in the past, is that your Tesla car is not only not only a vehicle to drive to work or drive your family. It can even generate income for you. You can just press like taxi mode, then you own self go out and pick up customers, fetch customers, like automated Uber like that, or you can become like an automated uh, taxi driver and give you income. So a lot of people are very fascinated and inspired, or by the potential of the full self driving and the promise of robo taxi. But over the past eight, nine, ten years, it has ne- never been fulfilled. So I don't think it can be fulfilled. Also, the FSD is always a scam. Like it's stuck at level two forever because it doesn't have the lidar. It lacks a certain hardware in order for them to do a like robo taxi similar to Pi Two. Uh, Apollo Go, the fleet of robot taxi. It needs a hardware up- upgrade. It needs lidar and, and many other things. And the current, the Model Three, Model Y, Model X, all this, all that doesn't have the 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 lidar. They use the camera technology. It it, it cannot achieve level four FSD. Yeah. So so I think one year plus ago, it, when I was on the backholder podcast, I highlighted all this. All people shoot me down. I told people that Tesla, my fair value is twenty dollars because I see that in the future earnings will crash from four dollars per share to two dollars per share, and I value it at ten times earnings is twenty dollar fair value. So Tesla continues to cut its price. So you be cut. They first announced that the price cut will be in U S. Then subsequently over the weekend they announced that the price cut will also be for China and Europe. So it's a global price cut. It's a global price price cut. So looking at the U.S. one, right, or、uh, based on U.S. price, is the average cut is about five to six percent like that, five to six percent price cut. So it's very clear that they do not have demand, or they are, they are producing too much and they are unable to sell it. And the only way to create demand is to lower the prices, or it's like lay long, lay long, or fire sale to get rid of their huh, bloated、uh, inventory. So lastly, by、uh, Gary Beck. So Gary Beck was a super Tesla bull. On 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 Twitter, you will see him every day talk about Tesla, and a lot of Tesla bulls follow him. For his his、uh, so called fund manager, lah. For his fund, I think at the peak, uh, Tesla was about fifteen percent of their portfolio, fourteen fifteen percent. I forgot already. And uh, since early this year, uh, he has trimmed his Tesla position to under three percent. So he has sold more than four, uh, four fifth, ah. So from like what fourteen percent, trim to below three percent. So so that's a huge trim, ah. Almost almost selling most his shares already. Or he sold like three quarter of his Tesla shares away already because he was pessimistic, bearish. He turned pessimistic, turned bearish on Tesla, and a lot of prominent investors also, uh, sold their shares like Chicken Genius, Mick Kevin, all this, because nowadays, right, the、uh, Investor sentiments, right? The one leading the incentive,、uh, investment sentiments is the influencers, be it on YouTube or be it on Twitter. A lot of the common folks are the the, the retail investors just follow their analysis, follow their word. Or because everyone is busy, nobody got time to do all the analysis, so they they trust the gurus. And a lot of the gurus have have sold off already. Like I said, Chicken Genius, or Gary Black, and even the Mick Kevin. All of them dump Tesla. 
and they are, they are now very pessimistic. Whereas the retail investors, right, it's very difficult for them to cut loss because Tesla, right, I would say if I look at the YouTubers, uh, even like for our Singapore scene, uh, Singapore YouTubers, most of them, their average price is $200. So they are back holding on, on Tesla. So I would say most retail investors, their average price is also about the $200 level. So now at $100.50, it's very difficult to cut. Because people don't want to realize a loss. People are very reluctant to, to realize the loss. So one thing I admire and respect Mr. Lu, 1M65. Mr. Lu, he cut uh, his Tesla shares at 170. So he, he took a loss. Uh, he said he took a loss. So I, I respect that. Uh, uh, because he see that it is not things are not doing well for Tesla. He get out. Uh, so, but but his, that one is more like his small position. I bought his like, trading portfolio. His main portfolio is uh, CPF and, and ETF. Yeah, so, but if you are like 100%, suppose there are like many uh, retail investors that follow Chicken Genius or Mick Kevin, they take very concentrated position on Tesla, easily like 30 to 100% or even 150% of their portfolio is Tesla. And when Tesla crash so much, how can you cut? You cannot cut. Like, it's just like me on Alibaba. I'll, I'll never sell Alibaba. Uh, so, so they will never sell their, their Tesla because they have their conviction on Tesla. I have my conviction on Alibaba. But fundamentally, like for Tesla, right, what is the earnings? What is the growth? So Gary Beck in, in his latest uh, tweet, right, he says that if price cuts are global, it will cost Tesla $2.7 billion per year. And that's a negative impact of $0.60 cents per share in uh, earnings. Also, that's very bad news. This price cut or uh, will push down its earnings per share further. So the this new cut right is announced over the weekend only. So Mondays the analysts they will view it negatively and they will readjust their, their outlook for Tesla. So that could lead to further cuts in their two four and two five uh, earnings per share guidance. Also, now analysts are est estimating that. The earnings per share will be like two dollars seventy seven. So if they adjust it lower, I I myself uh, I, my one is damn simple one. Of course, mine is rough estimate. I'm not so precise. I still predict Tesla will earn about two dollar per share, or uh, for for work year two zero two four. Then for next year, I think it will still be depressed. Uh, maybe two dollar two fifty. So I think analysts are way too optimistic, and now they are starting to wake up. They are starting to downgrade. So. Tesla in the coming earnings result, it, it could be like uh, negative earnings growth. The earnings come down and the revenues is also both. I think both earnings and revenues will come down. My personal view, double negative growth. But I, I don't know what, what is market expecting, expecting. So Tesla will report results on Tuesday. Do you all want me to do a Tesla preview on Monday or Tuesday? If you all want me to do a Tesla preview, uh, let me know. Also, the second part, I'll talk about gold. Uh. So I'll come back to my poll. So okay, everyone vote already, right? So let me end the poll. Okay. So are you buying gold? So eighty-two percent say no. Gold is too expensive now. So yeah, gold is very expensive. But as a value investor, we don't want to buy gold. Whereas seventeen percent say yes. Bubba is scared, war and crash. So like last year, last year already got people ask me can buy gold or not. That I told you is is nothing wrong. Or uh, to put like five or ten percent of your portfolio into gold if you want to hedge against war, hedge against inflation. So, but the time to buy was like half or one year ago. Now, now it's too late already. Yeah. Okay. So, let me see any questions. Yeah. So yeah, money. Chief Papa bought Meituan and Xiaomi. Yeah. So I think Fu Tu is also one. I saw from their comments. So he total got nine picks. Ah. but I know he confirmed don't have ten cent. But I'm not sure he got buy uh, Alibaba or not. I suspect Chief Papa got buy Alibaba. But but you must buy the GMT, then you can see his portfolio and the stock picks. Okay, gold is safe haven. Uh, okay, cash is safe haven. Cash, there's a worry. For example, you buy US dollar, but US dollar can depreciate and become toilet paper because they keep printing and printing. Yeah, so. Zhao Li, Raf, oh, Chua, uh, KT, welcome, welcome. Uh, LVX Subcup, ML, how to unlock Kamehameha? You need the Baba, Baba Bird icon. 
yeah once you get the baba bird icon then then you can do the special emoji the special emoji got green dragon la, rocket la, fa 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 and the kame kame ha yeah but but uh, no no real tangible benefit one la. the baba bird is just for fun one yeah so sj Tesla think they can compete in China and Asia, but even Asia is getting dominated by Chinese EVs already. Yeah, so even the Xiaomi SUV, the one that, that, that they just released, oh, is much cheaper than Tesla and is much better. That, that's all. A lot of the reviews are, are saying this. A lot of people give very good reviews for the recent Xiaomi car. The Chinese players, they are outperforming Tesla. Tesla the thing with Tesla is they are facing a lot of competition. That that's the thing. Uh, Oleg, if Tesla under one two oh Elon will have problems with bank loan. Uh Elon the, the, the bank loan, uh if I'm not wrong, he paid off already. Uh she's no longer using Tesla on, on margin. Because he's the private company, the SpaceX is doing very well. Star X so privately is valued very well. So most of the funding is actually uh, SpaceX or oh. he, he's using SpaceX either by selling some SpaceX shares or putting his SpaceX shares on margin he's getting the funding la. yeah Tesla I, 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 he might be dumping la, if they don't give him the shares that, that's why I worry he's not gonna dump at below $100 he want to dump he will dump at $150 or $120 100 plus then that will be the new in the coffin for, for Tesla holders Avatar Daily Fitness, what is Bird Bird? Bird Bird, ah, so Master and Bird Bird. Bird Bird is our community. Though. Bird Bird ah, is cute. Ma. Bird Bird. The last time when I first started the YouTube, the first year, I did the shots. So there's the Bird Bird Ask Master. So there's Bird Bird uh, Ask. And then uh, Bird Bird Ask Master, ah, this one can buy or not. Ah. So Bird Bird is like a new investor. One, one thing to learn and asking questions. So it's more like the role play, uh, comic comic kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Today is a gold special. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, bird bird master like bird bird ma bird bird cute. Then baba bird uh, rhymes very well. Baba bird. That like, cannot be baba fish baba dog ma. But baba bird is, is the like, the most cute or not? Yeah. We see whether CPI will spike up or not. Yeah. So uh, Mr. Lu very rich ah. Uh. I think he's the trading portfolio. The Tesla this is is his son managing the trading portfolio okay let's go to the second part so go 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 so Stephen Lim Koko our Singapore ex Singapore idol contestant <laughs> wannabe uh, oh, Stephen Lim Koko so Stephen Lim Koko is famous for what for clay pot chicken rice or oh, clay pot rice uh, in Singapore context because 40% of my viewers is overseas so clay pot comes from the sports betting culture so people who sports bet, right? Example, World Cup, ah, buy Brazil, Brazil lose, buy uh, Argentina, Argentina lose, buy Germany, Germany lose. Three row, three bet in a row lose, right? We call it clay pot because zero. Clay pot is a circle, zero. You you keep getting zero. You, you cannot score the win. So in Singapore culture, right? Clay pot, ah, is people right who always lose money. Master is also clay pot. Master clay ah, is the Alibaba clay pot. I lose two hundred thousand on Alibaba. So Stephen Lim is the clay pot for Sing Post. So what Stephen Lim did is that he sold his HDB flat for three hundred thousand. If he held on to his HDB flat easily now, I think it's four five hundred thousand. So he sell low, then he took the three hundred thousand, he buy Sing Post at the high, at about fifty over cents. Then it crashed to thirty over cents. He paper hand and got out. Then he lost I think hundred and twenty thousand. So it's down to hundred and eighty thousand. And he asked all his followers what to buy. So I commented on his Facebook or to ask him to buy the Hansing Tech Index uh, or the Hansing uh, Tech ETF or even Alibaba. Uh, but, but he got reply me, la, but, but he said he never follow me. Uh, of course, we are also so called influencers. <laughs> I don't know. So, uh, yeah. so, so anyway, he's, he's, on, he's on my Facebook in case you don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I'm, I'm not his friend. La. I never met him before. I just said we are all content creator. But, Oh, uh, and we are so called like uh the Tano side one, the CS Sing, uh, CS Sing. He's CS Sing. He is the CS Sing of his side. I'm the CS Sing of the like, finance YouTube. So in the end, I don't know he listened to who, or maybe his viewers all tell him to buy gold. So in the end, he decided to buy gold, and he took one hundred over thousand. I think it's 
almost a uh, hundred and thirteen hundred and thirteen thousand so in one of his video he went down to the uob branch then he paid in cash or for this one kg go bar and he said wow very good to play so <laughs> this one is so now right we like we see the the crash in the tech tech stocks all this and we see the greed and fear index is from very greedy is now shifted to i think now fear and we are heading towards extreme fear and the vix the volatility uh, index is also spiking up and we see the 10 year use also spiking up so you can see that people they are what flying to safety it's, it's like a flight to safety so people are, are like we re, not risk taking anymore that's why we also saw a bitcoin crashing from 73k down to uh, 60k but now bounce bounce up a bit bitcoin is bouncing here and there so those who are risk adverse want to buy some gold how to buy physical gold you can go to uob now this is not sponsored post huh? just that I, if i'm not remember wrongly right uob is the only local bank that sells physical gold dbs uh, ocbc maybank all this they all don't sell already they all phase out already because it's very costly you see you do all the accounting uh, all the checking uh, all the storage all these guys very cost heavy and nowadays you can actually own gold uh, through etf or digitally you, you don't have to buy the physical gold bar so buying the physical gold bar shows that steven Lim is very dinosaur very dinosaur but one kg is about 100 13 hundred seventeen thousand uh sing dollar la. so if you want to buy physical gold you can go to uh, uh U uob so go right the problem with Stephen Lee is buying gold at the all-time high. Now it's near the all-time high. Oh. So look at the five-year chart. It's already up 88%. So gold is not the kind of asset uh, that gives you high return. So if you average it out over the past five years, that's an average return of about 15 or to 18% like that. So that's very high return. That's like index equity kind of return historically what is the return of gold very simple is inflation it, it, the return of gold is inflation because a uh, gold is a hard asset similar to like property similar to commodities like like oil uh, so all, all this is a commodities uh, asset so commodities asset right uh, like like gold and oil they don't generate income so their pricing is mostly based on based on inflation over time the value go up because the supply of currency increases. For example, if the whole world only got $1,000 and, and there's the 10 gold bar, so each gold bar is $100. But now the total supply from $1,000 become $10,000 and there's still the same uh, amount of gold bar. So the price also uh, 10x. So it's the increase of money supply, the increase of inflation. That's why there's the increase of gold prices. So traditionally, gold right, is used for only two purposes one is to hedge against inflation number two is in times of crisis example you live in the middle east uh, then you're worried that suddenly oh, you will get bombed your house will be gone everything will be gone you want to run out of the country suddenly overnight oh, it's like tunnels like that snap the finger half half your province half your village is gone already so you want to hold to go bar so even if example like example we are in singapore you have like three go bar hide under your mattress suddenly wow let's say uh there's a bigger nation want to invade singapore you just take your three gold bar put in your backpack then you just run up to malaysia then from malaysia you run up to thailand at least you still have your three gold bar worth 300 over thousand your, your hdb fat also kind of bomb away already so gold is even safer and more defensive than, than hdb because even in times of war you can just take the gold bar or 3 kg, 5 kg, 10 kg. Or I think the most you can carry maybe 20 kg go, go bar. So 20 kg go bar, that's $2 million uh, worth of currency uh, that you can carry in your backpack. And you can just run away, take the 2 million, you go to Thailand and you can still, uh, re re if you escape to Thailand, you can still retire there. Or with your 20 go bar. Am I right? So go is the most, most, most uh, defensive or uh, uh, asset uh, in, in that sense because it's a crisis asset. And now it's at all time high because why? Because people are risk adverse. Or they think of the worst case scenario, Russia, Ukraine war, Middle East war, China invade Taiwan, or that the US will keep printing money and the US dollar will become toilet paper. 
so so <laughs> well, people are very risk adverse so the big question is who is buying gold who is pu- keep pushing up uh, gold prices is it Stephen Lim is it all the Stephen Lim coco that all FOMO wow Nasdaq, Nasdaq crash 2% Nvidia crash 10% oh no sell 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 Nvidia sell Tesla take all the money all in gold is it the Stephen Lim coco uh, all these uh, FOMO people pushing up gold prices also the answer is no <laughs> the answer is actually central bank so this is actually similar to what Chief Papa uh, shared yesterday like, just that mine is more detailed because I get the Bloomberg article so in this recent Bloomberg article they explain that gold is has risen to all-time high above 2400 and house all-time high then all-time high then you go in buy too late already like. <laughs> so, uh, the main reasons they explain is that the Middle East war and the lowering of uh, US interest rate so that's why people are adverse that's why they want to buy gold to hedge so gold right actually is going up is because of central banks buying central banks like Singapore we are also buying but a lot of these central banks right they are running away from US dollar since the Russia Ukraine war because what American did was they used US dollar as a currency of war. They use it as a tool of war. Or Russia had billions of US dollars with the US uh, international banks. And because they invaded Ukraine, US freeze all of the Russia US dollar. Russia, their US dollar overnight become toilet paper. So it's not wise for large nations, right, to hold too much US dollar. Example, China. China is the biggest debt holder or is the biggest creditor of US and number two is Japan. So China and Japan, they, they export a lot of goods to US. They sell electronics, uh, sell clothes, uh, sell so many things. So they collect US dollar and because they export more than they import from the US, they have a lot of excess US dollar. So they take the excess US dollar, they buy all into the US government bonds and they see the Russia all their reserves suddenly can become a uh, toilet paper worthless so all these nations they are they are worried so they start to diversify to hold less us dollar and to purchase other currency but they look and look what other currency to to purchase you want to buy euro euro the euro zone is also heavily debt you want to buy japanese yen japanese yen or oh, they are also heavily geared so the g7 nation the developed nations they are all heavily in debt their currency is more and more like toilet paper. They have been printing and printing and printing. That's why we are facing high inflation. So the wisest choice is to go back to the asset that has been tested through time, that has been around for 10,000 years, even the Egyptian time, the Roman times, the emperors, what they use, they use gold coin. Gold will always have value. Gold is the most superior commodity. Gold is the oldest currency so china is is buying gold to to diversify and they'll be buying for 17 months straight and i think they will continue to buy so recently we saw janet yellen visiting china i think two times already what what is her role she's the treasury secretary so she's the one in charge of or uh, sell printing money and, and, and sell, selling the bonds are uh, selling the long-term government bonds so China is not buying new bonds. So their existing U.S. Uh, bond portfolio, right, once it goes to maturity, they get the sum from U.S. dollar. They take the U.S. dollar, they buy gold. So Janet Yellen, her objective is asking China right, to reinvest their U.S. dollar. Because if China doesn't buy the U.S. dollar, right, then when uh, the U- U.S. debt keeps increasing, so every month they must issue new debt. And now they face an issue is that nobody wants to buy their new debt, even when it's priced at 5% interest. So Janet Yellen is facing an uphill battle to get the China to buy. China not interested to buy. And some, especially now US keep uh, 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 slapping China, more tariffs, more sanctions, all this. Yeah, so Janet Yellen, her, her job is very difficult. But more central banks now, they are diversifying away, diversifying away from US dollar and not only into gold. You see that Middle East, Russia, one of the currency that their central banks are holding more and more is the RMB, the renminbi. Also China, uh, in the past, uh, the use of RMB worldwide, I think pre-COVID was about 2%. Uh, 
now almost five six percent of international trade is being settled uh, using RMB, and slowly the percentage will only go higher and higher. So it's the Ray Dalio, the, the changing world order. Also, China and India have always been the largest uh, buyer of gold. When in the past, right, I would say like pre pre COVID, right, it's actually India was the biggest buyer. Because like, I, I explained to you all, every country, right, they have their culture. India, their culture is gold. To get married, you, you must, must have gold, gold bars, gold jewelry for the boundary. Or I think Vietnam is also similar like that. Myanmar is also similar. Whereas China is different. China, you must have property to, to get married. So now the thing is China, right? Property uh, exploded already, crashed 30%. So China is now the, the biggest buyer of gold. Not only their central bank, but also their uh, common folks. But central bank is the one that actually pushed the prices up. So the, the common folks are, are also buying. So for China, right, they're actually the biggest miner of gold. But their consumption is so much, they're buying so much that even their own internal production cannot meet the demand. So they are actually importing gold. They are the biggest importer of, of gold. You can see the, the, the blue color bar. Oh, that, that is like, wow, like 150 ton, 200 over ton. That, that is like crazy. That's like about, wow. Their import amount over the last two years is one third the stockpile held by the US. Also, China keeps buying gold. It's a ridiculous amount. So that's also uh, where the liquidity ha has a shift. So the money is not going into property market. The money is going into the, the, the gold or physical gold. So the demand for gold in China is so high that it trades at a premium to normal gold prices. Well, because they, they, there's a, a, the amount that they import is really record high. But how much we can import, it depends on the logistics, like the, the, the shipping ports uh, uh, and the importers. Right? The, they import as much as they can really. But the demand on the ground is so much due to the central bank and also the, the common folks. Yeah. So the premium that they pay, right? Example, now the gold prices is 2,400. But in China, it could be 2,500, 2,600. So the premium over international price has jumped to $89 an ounce. Eh. Whereas in the past, the historical average is just $7 an, an ounce. So uh, that is like uh, euphoria already. It's FOMO already. People are paying above the net asset value uh, because they just want to get the gold bar immediately. So uh, ETFs is also the same. ETF, right, they trade at like 20 to 30% premium to NAV. So that's the, that's the funny thing. Nobody wants property. Like I said, link risk. Link risk historical price to book is 0 0.9 times. But now it's trading at 0 0.5 times book. It's trading at a 40% discount. Whereas gold is trading at a 30% of premium. So, so it's the sentiment thing. So all the common folks, they are like Stephen Lim like that. They are rushing to buy physical gold. They are rushing to buy gold ETF. So uh, money flowing into gold ETF has been positive uh, since uh, June. So you can see blue color is the gold ETF. So it has been uh, always like positive like, over the past period, like, the past one year period. Whereas uh, black color is international gold. Sometimes people get in or people get out. So it's like a fear index. You know, people buy gold because they are fearful. People sell gold because they, they shift into risk asset. So China, right? People say that, oh, China gone case. Ah. China recession. Ah. China, the, all the folks, all life that are thumping. Ah. It's not true. Ah. Or if you go to China and for holiday, you see the airports is full. The, the real, uh, you book the real way, you need to book one or two weeks in advance. Otherwise, you cannot get the ticket. Travel sector is, is rebounding. Retails is uh, sales is rebounding. Or uh, whether it's physical or whether it's uh, online. And online is very strong. China online retail market expanded in the first quarter. So online you can also buy gold. You go Taobao, Tianmao, you can also buy gold, but mostly it's the gold jewelry. Uh. So online sales for the first quarter rose 12.4%. So that's very good. So uh, I think Alibaba, JD, all this should, should do well. Uh. So for, for them, right, like I said, yes, they are facing a lot of competition uh, from uh, Douyin and, and Kuaiso. They do live stream and they also sell the goods and, and live stream is going very fast. But I think Taobao, Tianmao and JD, they have their own niche. 
or like like JD is very strong in selling electronics. So uh, the market is all segmented. All the different platforms they are strong at selling different products because retail is so huge. There's apparel, there's like jewelry, there's makeup, cosmetics, there's uh, fashion, or there's electronics, or there's you can even sell EV car online like Xiaomi. They sold their EV car on online. Or they, then so there's so many different products and you as a platform right you cannot be strong at all products so different platforms they are strong at different things for example like quite so is strong at agriculture products jd is strong at electronics then uh uh towing is uh, more towards like uh, targeting the young audience like fashion uh, apparel uh th those kind of things and even uh, food so food delivery and restaurants service uh grew 27.8 percent so i think may twine results will be very strong and, and Meituan is the top pick of Chi Papa la. so I've covered Meituan before I like Meituan but I won't buy but I myself I, I don't use this food delivery I don't use Meituan I don't use Grab I, I, I don't understand the business as, as much I use Shopee I use la, Lazada so so to me Baba and SE is uh, easier to understand yeah so lastly someone I master ah. I, I very scared ah. I want to buy go ah. how to buy go I go UOB and buy ah. Hundred thirteen thousand ah, no money to buy go buy ah. how only got ten thousand twenty thousand ah. oh, then you can buy the gold ETF so the gold ETF uh, is uh, uh by the State Street Fund ah, or uh, under the Bedrock one so it's GLD ticket code GLD so gold I, I was talking about it one 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 year ago <laughs> yeah. then the past one year up a lot already ah. so so I don't chase lah but but nothing wrong lah if if that's it. Uh, you, you you believe that let's say you have a view la, that the tech bubble will, 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 will crash then you, you are very heavy on tech like you holding Nvidia you holding Microsoft Amazon Meta Alphabet you want to trim your US big tech position then where to pull it where to pull it I think the best place to put it is actually the money market fund so it's my thinking is similar to Mick Kevin Mick Kevin is so off all his Tesla shares he put the 35% of his portfolio into the money market fund get 5% risk free so I think that at the current junction nothing wrong to hold 20 or even 30% of your portfolio in cash so like Berkshire Hathaway Warren Buffett Warren Buffett I think Berkshire Hathaway about 20% of the market cap is in cash then Mick Kevin is 35% in, in cash so I think 20 to 30% of your portfolio in cash Getting five percent risk free, I don't think that can be a big mistake. Ah. market even if don't crash, you still collect five percent. Am I right? Yeah. So, uh, if you really want to buy gold, like I said, you just say you 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 trim your portfolio by one quarter. You have like you sold twenty five percent of your shares already. So how to allocate this twenty five percent? You can put twenty percent in the money market fund and five percent in gold. Or in that sense, I think it, it makes sense that you are di diversifying. You are taking a defensive position but if you sell 25 percent of your portfolio you take 25 percent of that and oil into gold then i think it's come gong uh, it's a stupid move uh, uh, that's a bit stupid uh, put 25 percent of your portfolio into all all time high gold steven name is more stupid uh, he got 180k he put 113k into gold that's two third he put two third of his portfolio into gold ah uh, steven name gone case uh, gone case uh. if he have one million dollar then he put hundred thirteen thousand into gold. Okay la, I, I still think that that's that's nothing wrong ah. Or put ten percent of your portfolio into gold or as a hedge against war or, or whatever. I don't think that's wrong ah. But if you put a very big percentage, then then you are speculating ah, and, and likely you will get burned. Also, that's my thinking. So I hope you all enjoy my sharing oh, today. A bit different ah. Today talk about gold. Yeah. So Sunday uh suddenly hey I see the Stephen Nicoco. <laughs> Uh, buy buy gold. Then I copy paste put in my slides. Then then I see a hey, Bloomberg got this article on gold. So ah uh, so I just might as well do do a Sunday special. Uh, talk about gold. Yeah. So I hope you all like my weekend special. Sometimes have, sometimes don't have lah. Or if you got news, then inspired, then I do lah. <laughs> yeah. So I think Monday or Tuesday I, I might do a preview of of Tesla. Then Tuesday Tesla results. Then uh I think uh uh I think. A lot of big big tech results ah uh, uh, next week. Oh Tuesday is Tesla, Wednesday is Meta, Thurs Thursday is uh Microsoft. So I'll, I'll usually I report the, the day after because they report at night ma.
So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Tesla, Meta, uh, Microsoft. Wow, so very busy week for master. There's also REITs. REITs, this time what I'm covering is the Kepler REIT, uh, CLCT, MPACT, FCT, Suntec REITs. Wow. All my five Tiger General uh, is reporting next week uh, part the uh, CLCT. CICT last Friday already reported. And there's also Ping An on, on Wednesday. Wow, so Master next week, wow, super busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah like, so luckily I, I, I covered gold already. Yeah, so I didn't know it covered. Yeah, so next week is on the uh, US Big Tech and also on the uh, Singapore Blue Chip Reads. So, so I think Tesla, I, I might do a preview la, or, on Tesla Monday or Tuesday. See how la, la, yeah. if I lazy, la, I might not do. La. Also, that's all my share. <laughs> Feel free to chit chat, uh, talk about gold uh, or, or what else you can. Yeah, gold can wear and, and how lean. The Stephen Lee Walker, he has a, what, uh, has, he has a huge ego. Uh. He, he's very uh, attention seeking. He wants everybody to, to follow him, uh, to, 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 to see him. Uh, yeah. But I scold him. The other time when he sold the Sing Post, asked what to buy, I got to give him advice. This time around, he sell the gold, I scold him, I comment, you come gong, go and buy gold at an uh, all-time high. I don't know this time around he will reply me or not. <laughs> yeah, but we are the same uh, category, we are the CSing, we are the Thanos of the Singapore community. His one is entertainment, uh, my one is education. <laughs> so, yeah, we are different uh, segments. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tokomi, I remember Master do the shots, uh, but but us, uh, the Bubba R series, uh, Master, uh, Baba job ready, uh, can buy or not? Uh, yeah. This start from the Bubba series. Uh, yeah. uh, Steven Lim Koko, wow, you respect. Uh, yeah. Wow, he's 48 years old. Uh. I thought he's the same age as me. Uh. I thought he's like 41 or what. Well, he's, he's very fit uh, now. He's, he's super fit. Uh. I think now his business is he's like a gym instructor or what. He's at his own private studio. Then he teach people how to like, lose weight uh, and become fit. Uh. It's more like into like fitness and modeling, all this one. Yeah. Wow, he, he got his own uh, security. Uh, he's on the TikTok. Uh. Wow. Oh, dance studio. Yes, yes, yes. He got the dance studio. Money. Wow, you also Stephen Lim got call fan. Oh, Midnight. Daniel Ng. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your mala hot pot. Uh. Glad you enjoy my weekend, Sherry. Hope you all this weekend uh, have, a, have a good time. Next week, exciting already. Next week, the big tech earnings, uh, REITs earnings. Uh. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, next week uh, the REIT earnings is good, then the REITs can, can bounce, start bouncing up. I look at the CICT, the results, quite good, eh? nothing wrong. Eh? I look at the CICT, nothing wrong. Kaper DC REIT is very bad, uh, it's very bad. But, but <laughs> CICT, nothing wrong. Eh? Then I see the other Five Tiger General, see okay or not. Yeah, yeah. David Wong, Stephen Lin, this type of investor, who best to stick to ETF, very emotional. But I think Stephen... Lim, he's the emotional is that I think he act, act it out one. Uh. He's like, yeah, he, I'm all in. Sing pose, sing pose, yeah. Like, uh, he's more like an actor, uh, that very dramatic. I think he's very dramatic, yeah. He, he, but he, because he's very attention seeking. Uh. Yeah. Money, go should have bought at 1,600 plus. Now, 2,000 plus. Then, but yeah, he really buy high. Uh, yeah. Marvin Fu, he sell his HDV where he, he live. Uh. I think he, he, yeah, I don't know. Eh. Probably he go back to his parents' house and, and, and stay. Lor. Yeah. But nothing wrong. Lah. He boss is 48. Lah. Well, that means he bought the retail, then he sell away. He can buy again. Lah. He can buy again. Lor. Because he's still 48. Ma. But now he uh, he no money to buy. Lah. He can he can go back and buy again. Ma. Because he's single above 35. Can, can, can buy a uh, resale. Yeah, but maybe he sleep. In his studio, I don't think he will rent. Uh. Rent is very loogie. Uh. Rent is very expensive. Either he sleep in his the dance studio or, or he just go back his parents' house and, and, and sleep. Uh. Yeah. So yeah. So uh, example last time people asked me the master uh, if a single right uh, should buy uh how 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 to use the CPF uh, if I'm a single person. Oh, I think the best way is actually to, to buy a condo. Example, you are in your like uh, late, late, late 20s or early 30s uh, and you just say you are high income, right? Actually, you can buy condo one. So one of the advanced strategy, right? Not that I encourage, is, example, you're a single person, right? Is you stay with your parents. Not, nothing wrong to, to be stay with your parents. But then you buy the property is for investment. 
And one way is that you can, like, let's say for me, I'm not a believer of, of CPF. So you take your CPF to buy property. If you're above 35, you can buy a resale. If you are uh, uh, below 35, you can buy a, a condo. Then you rent, rent it out. Because when you pay for the property, right, you can use your CPF ordinary account to pay for your property. But when you collect the rental, right, you're collecting in cash. So using property right, is a way to cheat, cheat out your CPF. You can uh, juice out your CPF into cash. And one way is, and that's through property rental. Uh, but, but people don't teach you this. Huh? Everything master teach is all the dark side. Right? Master is the Thanos of investing. Uh. Yeah. So you see 1M65, uh, Mr. Lu, uh, Honey Money, uh, Calvin, uh, they, they don't teach you this thing. Huh? But master know all these so-called uh, uh, the dirty tricks are uh. yeah. So uh, if you're not a believer of CPF, the, the best way to, to withdraw money out of your CPF is to use your CPF to invest in property and use the and collect the property rental. Don't stay in the property. Collect the property. Property rental is cash. Then you pay the property with your CPF, and that's the cheat code. <laughs> Uh, but if you want to, if you want to hear topics like this, then maybe in the future, uh, like weekend, I can do a special. Uh, yeah. how to the use your CPF? <laughs> no, no, I think I think I won't do that uh, because mine is very contradicting. Uh, if I do this kind of thing, a lot of people will shoot me down. People say this guy talking cock. Uh, all the one six five, or all the honey money fan now uh, will all come and whack me. <laughs> they supercharge your CPF. <laughs> uh, CPF, why you want to convert to cash? They want to take their cash put into CPF. <laughs> Uh, until they are sixty-five, my my thinking is different. I don't. I want as little cash in my, as little CPF as possible. I want as much cash as possible. Plus, cash gives me a uh, optionality. I, I can, I can put in money market fund. I can buy stocks. I can buy REITs. I can buy gold. I can buy anything. Cash is the most flexible. CPF is so restricted. I I don't like CPF. Yeah. So okay. Jackie Lee, thank you, thank you. Okay, wow, Vietnam, may may hot, hot la. Yeah, a lot of Asia culture, right? Is, uh, is Asia, right? We actually like hard asset. Like our parents' time, right? They like physical gold. They like property. Whereas the American culture, they like stock market. They like to use their pension fund, uh, but buy or the four hundred one k, la, but buy into the ETFs, all this. So it's a culture thing. That's why U.S. market is always very expensive. Then U.S. property, they, they like to rent. Whereas Asia culture is you must own your own property. Then you put some gold bar, you put some cash in your Milo tin. <laughs> you, you can feel it. You can feel it. They want to feel it. Okay. Ian Ong, Master, you got money in bank. Will you shift all cash into money market fund? Or you mean money in your investment account? Uh, Money in, money got two types of money. One is your... the the Okay, so... Money, right? There's the example your monthly expenses plus your the emergency fund, maybe like three to six months of your monthly expenses. Then your monthly expenses is two thousand. Then you want to hold six or twelve thousand. That one I, I just put it in, in my normal account. I uh, don't put money market fund or what. Yeah. So your normal account must at least have like five k or ten k, or your normal account uh, there for for your monthly expenses or or, or what uh. Then your investment portfolio, the cash. Then you put in the money market fund. Like, like within your the discount broker, you you can just park your cash there. I think if US dollar, you can get like 5%. Sing dollar, you can get like 3.8%. All, all these discount broker, they have the money market fund. So the money is your investment portfolio. The cash por portion, then you put in the money market fund. Your, your own, uh, your own uh, liquid, Cash, right? You don't put in the money market fund. Why? Because like I explained to you all before already, there's the MF Global uh, crisis. So MF Global was an incident where the broker misused the client fund and go bankrupt. So imagine, right? You put your the six-month emergency fund in, in a discount broker. Then the discount broker is MF Global. Then suddenly the MF Global say that it's going bankrupt. Then you need to do bankruptcy. After the bankruptcy is over, then you can get back your money uh, two or three years later. Then you then your money is stuck there already. Then your emergency fund is stuck there. Emergency fund cannot put anywhere one. Yeah, you can only in your bank account. In my, in my, or, or in your Milo tin. Emergency fund is Milo tin fund. Yeah, so it must be your emergency fund uh, or, or your 
um, uh, expenses fund uh, I call it the expenses fund or just hold it as cash don't be greedy and earn the extra uh, few percentage point then, then you have the cash flow issue yeah just for him AK71 talk about Baba and that's ah I never go and see the video. The YouTube will recommend me that video because they know I'm a Baba holder. I I I, do, I don't dare to click it. Confirm he he will bash Baba and Tesla one. Uh, the AK and the one confirm will not buy Baba and Tesla. Yeah, I confirm he won't buy one. He is only pure Singapore market one. Yeah. Uh, Buster biggest invest fail is sell SE bad move ten X. I think SE will do very well. SE will continue uh, to compound uh, because uh, for 2024 SE the revenue growth 18 percent so I think easily that uh, the next five to ten years they can grow at 15 to 20 percent uh, per year but why master so SE because I'm too stressed out already master very stressed up uh, this year because the green dragon never come SE is very volatile earnings easily up down 20 30 percent and SE don't pay dividend so it's more of a strategy, my portfolio strategy, a shift in my portfolio strategy. Yeah, so tomorrow I'll be buying Ping An Ling with Alibaba JD. Then make a portfolio collect 5%. So now my, my portfolio strategy is collect 5% dividend. Even the, the market rally or crash, I don't care. I collect my 5% and sleep well at night. Then I know my basket of, of these stocks, are, they are all blue chip ch Chinese companies that won't go bankrupt. That, that I don't think Alibaba, JD, Ping An, and Lingwis will go bankrupt. They are very solid. I've done my due diligence. So in the base case, if market goes sideways, I collect 5%. If market recovers, I think I can double or triple my money. So overall, I think my portfolio strategy is very sound. Very sound. Yeah, yes, the, the SE can be a multi-bagger. But I realize that I don't need to 5x, 10x my money. Master just want to sleep well at night. Yeah, so I hope you all understand my, my strategy. Yeah, Josh Tan wanted to interview Stephen Lim Koko. Yeah, Josh Tan got to do the financial. Yeah. Uh, David Wong, you saw ML commenting or or the <laughs> the Stephen post. Yeah. I tan off him. I say you come gong uh, you you buy the go. But I got advice him, you know. I tell him to buy Alibaba or Hansen Tech or the Hansen uh in uh Hansen Index or Hansen Tech or Alibaba Tencent. He, he, he say, uh, yeah, thank, thanks. He thanked me for the advice, blah, 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 blah. Then, then he never listened to me. What lao, he go and buy gold. Ah, yeah. Because, <laughs> ah, then I don't know already. Ah, he go and buy gold. Yeah. But, but uh, this, uh, this camera uh, is not my friend. Uh. Don't, don't associate me with St Stephen Lim. Uh. I do talk to him, but, but he's not my friend. Oh, don't, don't call me, hey, your friend go and buy go ah uh. oh, no, no. <laughs> tech master uh. he's not my friend ah uh. you are just content creators then then I, I advise him to to buy uh but I, I hope that he she buy Alibaba ma but when he, if he buy Alibaba he will go and tell the whole world buy Alibaba but in the end he never listen to me nah. he never buy Alibaba he never buy Hansing Tech he go and buy go come gong uh, ah yeah, yeah Gen X Y Z master can comment on Pai Tu Pai Tu recently got good news that they uh the robo taxi they want to monetize it they, they, they are starting to shift the direction uh to to make profits because the robo taxi fleet uh, they are gaining some skill already so in the past they, they target like how many uh rides how many hours of, of robo taxi but now they change already now their target is 1 million revenue 10 million revenue 100 million revenue 1 billion revenue keep going up so now now the robot taxi fit instead of number of hours of right now the 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 goal post is the how what is the profitability what is the growth yeah so that's the right direction so by two is is a, a good ai play la. but the by two the problem is the search business is dinosaur business by two search it's a bit dinosaur but it's still a cash cow by two you are betting on like the by two cloud and the ernie board and the apollo robot taxi but by two to me is like a black box uh. Uh, you see the earnings result uh, their presentation slides are uh, not much details uh. I prefer Alibaba and JD their, their management is more transparent I get a lot of their business the breakdown the numbers so I prefer Alibaba and JD and on the flip side I'm bearish on Pink Toto but I think uh, Pink Toto is very shady by two I don't know as much uh. I don't really use their products also I don't use any board uh, I don't use Apollo taxi never take before 
I don't use by two search, so I don't buy the company. I'm not their user. Whereas, uh, yeah, I use e-commerce, so I think it's easy for me to understand e-commerce. Yeah. Okay, master can go. Yeah. Uh, he likes uh, Xiao Ping An can collect dividend. He likes Xiao Mei Mei. Uh. Uh, the the Stephen Lim he got girlfriend one you know he always change girlfriend one you know he always like uh, cheat those Xiao Mei Mei no not say cheat ha. he like to send the Xiao Mei Mei yeah. what's the Xiao Mei Mei think that he's superstar ma then the Xiao Mei Mei oh think that he's the celebrity or what but he don't know that the Xiao Mei Mei don't know that Stephen Lim Coco is the C S Sing C S Sing why okay why K okay. master why you invest in few companies instead of three zero six seven so three zero six seven is a Hang Seng Tech E P F. For me, I'm a stock picker. So what I what I try to achieve is, I want to make, uh, outperform the index. In fact, I want to make double the returns of the 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 index. So for example, three zero six seven, right? The average PE ratio is about fifteen times earnings. So three zero six seven inside the index, there's also hardware companies like, example, BYD, Xiaomi, Lenovo, uh, Sony Optic. So I I don't want the hardware companies or. Uh, and inside there, there's also like EV com companies, uh, green energy. Uh, so all these industries, right, the, the PE ratio is not cheap. Uh, uh, it's not, not that cheap. Example, SMIC, uh, chip maker, is like 15, 16 times earnings. So those that I buy, right, uh, is uh, I buy like those super cheap ones, like Alibaba, JD, uh, 8 times earnings. Or Ping An, I think is like 6 times earnings. Uh. Then the Lingwis, uh, half price to book, 8% uh, dividend yield. So, for me, I'm a value investor. So among the basket of three zero six seven, I'm trying to pick those that are way, way, way oversold. Then my hope is that I can super outperform the index. Meaning like, if the index, the historical returns is like ten percent, I want to make like twenty percent. I I don't want to make ten percent or even twelve percent. I don't want to outperform the index by two percentage point because I'm putting in so much effort to do research all this. So I target to at least make uh, double the returns of the index, which is like uh, compounding my money at, at 20% or, or more. So I believe that, uh, so my thesis of Alibaba, JD, Ping An and Lingwish is that in, in a recovery, uh, easily all these can double one. Like the Lingwish historical book value 0 0.9 times. So now it's 0 0.45, 0 0.5 times. So it goes back to historical valuations, then it's a double. Then Ping An is also an easy double, fair, fair value. 1.5 times book, $75, now it's like $30. Then Alibaba and JD, I've spoken a lot, <laughs> they're trading at 1.2 times book value, yeah, easily, their fair value is a double or triple. Or is it, Baba, Baba could be a triple if it goes back to uh, $200 level. Yeah, so, uh, my, my, my play is to double or triple, yeah, so, whereas you buy the index, you, uh, it's very hard to double or triple your money if you buy the index. But even the Hansing uh, index, right? Hansing index or the Hansing tech index, if you buy at such low level, right? I think you can compound your money at 20%, at least. Uh, at least. Uh. Then Alibaba, JD, Ping An, Lingwish, right? This portfolio at this price, like Monday, tomorrow, I buy, right? Uh, at this like low level, right? Wow, easily, I think, can double my money within the next two years. It's like 50% returns a year. So you see, I see whether I'm right or not, huh? So so tomorrow I buy, then it, it, one or two years later, if my portfolio do well, then I, I'm sure you all what is the returns. I don't know. Yeah. So 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 that's all my, my sharing for tonight. Yeah, thanks all for coming. Yeah. Hope you all enjoyed your weekend. Oh, take care all. Yeah, Stephen Lim got money one. Ah. And like turns he don't listen to me. Ah. I tell him already, he go and buy gold. Ah. Yeah. Stephen Lim gone case. Yeah, so take care all. See you all next week. Ah, next week busy. Ah. All the big tech company and the blue chip weeds.